Good morning. Morning, folks. Morning, Marty, Robert, <coughs> Rob, Nigel. Morning, Nigel. Who's Australia? Morning, Bob. Morning, Jackie, Marty, Mark, Jan, Lenny, Rosalind, Ted. Morning, Ted. Right, we're climbing nicely. Once we get to the 100, we'll barter through this. I've got a lot to do today. Uh, well, I might have a lot to do, I might not have a lot to do, depends on whether the engineer puts a motor off the road or not. Um, but either way, I'm short on time. Yeah. So good morning everyone. Morning Alexander. Morning Sandra. Morning Lorna. Morning Margaret. Nearly there. Um, morning, Scott. Eck. Thomas. Good doggy. Nearly there. Morning, Jim. Morning, Ter. No, oh, up and doing that. We'll just need to date. Here we go. One hundred and one on board. Let's get this broadcast underway. It's a and the truck Davy and the truck coming to you today from Easter House, where it is overcast and clammy. That's the weather for Easter House. You want to know what the weather's like where you are? Look out the bloody window. Right, let's get started. Coronavirus update. These are the figures for yesterday, the 22nd of the 8th, 2021. Tested in Scotland since the pandemic reached our shores, 2,648,000. 614,013. Tested positive since the pandemic reached their shores, 383,403, and that was plus 3,190 new um, positive tests from Saturday to Sunday. In hospital, there are 338 COVID patients, that's up 18, and of which 34 are in the intensive care units, and that is up 2. Vaccinated, there have been 4,079,496 people in Scotland have had a jag. An increase of 3,941 from Saturday to Sunday of people receiving their first jags. Of that 4,079,496, 3,556,947 people have had both jags. An increase of 15,239 from Saturday to Sunday. And that translates to 78.2% of all over 18s in Scotland having had a vaccination, having had, uh, sorry, have been fully vaccinated, have had two jags, all right? Right, let's move on and have a look at the stories I picked out to talk about over the weekend. As you can imagine, some of them will be quite um, obvious, all right? Right, review of the weekend's news. Friday started with a mixed bag in the rags with Afghanistan, Scott Rail and Dennis Law all making the front pages. Dominic Rabb, the useless foreign secretary, is under pressure for not being on top of his brief. Re-Afghanistan and Afghani employees and British um, citizens getting them out of Afghanistan. All right. Mr Rabb was on holiday and couldn't he be buggered picking up the phone to do his job. So... Mr. Rabb told the, the UK public he was working flat out while in Crete on holiday. And I have to correct myself, I said he was in Cyprus, he wasn't, he was in Crete. Um, anyway, newspapers pictured Rabb stoking about playing um, in the water. I think it's, I think the paper, the headline said he was playing foot tennis or water tennis or something like that. Right? Um, he, you know... So it would appear that Mr. Rabb was telling the Commons Porky Pies that he was in Tapia's brief while he was in holiday, because he wasn't. He was actually playing in the paddling pool or whatever. Right? Now, the mail, eh, the mail says, as I say, as a, a, a Kabul fell under Taliban control, Mr. Rabb was playing water tennis. Mr. Rabb allegedly instructed the junior minister to do his job for him. The junior minister couldn't be asked either. 
So people who serve the UK and Afghanistan are stuck and facing death. Um, probably thanks to Mr. Rab, because as it turns out, the Taliban they gave a nice wee press conference uh, last week saying they were going to behave themselves, and by the end of the week they were uh, tracing uh, collaborators and telling them to turn themselves over. Right. So, thanks to Mr. Rab, no bother on his arse, doing his job, people in Afghanistan are going to bloody well die. Right. Now, the Scott Rail story, the second story, was an SNP bad story, as the SNP and Greens were about to um, announce their deal. And before their deal was announced, the, be the press corps here in Scotland decided to get the boot in and try and split the, the agreement before it even started. So what they were saying was that Scott Rail was taking one and eight trains out of service. But that's not a bad thing if they're taking one and eight diesel trains out of service. Because, let's face it, diesel trains produce... A fair bit of pollution. All right. Now the other story in the headlines is 81-year-old ex-Scotland international footballer Dennis Law has been diagnosed with dementia. We wish him well with his uh, health issues because at 81-year-old, it's highly unlikely he's going to get any better. Right. Moving on. Um, Friday. A new loan deal for uh, um, for farmers uh, was launched. £337 million has been made available by the Scottish Government for Scottish farmers because of Brexit and the decline in the market sizes. The money is to help secure the domestic food supply chain. The food sovereignty and food security is, are becoming an issue. And the, one of the primary jobs of government is to ensure there is enough food to feed the population. The strengthening the domestic food, food supply chain is going to be vital moving forward as Brexit really hits. All right. Now, Independence Live are doing um, a series of programmes on food security and food sovereignty. And if you've got an interest in that sort of thing, you'll be able to find them on YouTube. OK. Now, now it's vital that we all shop local and buy local produce to strengthen the local supply chains. Right. But that doesn't mean you don't get empty. It doesn't mean no use in supermarkets. All these uh, products will have a, um, a, a place of origin on them. So when you're in the supermarket, have a wee read at the label and find out if it's local produce and buy local and strengthen the local supply chains. That's going to be very, very important going forward, folks. I can't emphasise this enough. Buy for your local farmer if you can, if you're, if you're in the area, your local farmer. If no, the, uh, buy domestically. If you're buying milk, buy your local milk producer, buy your local butter, buy your local cheese, buy your local meats, buy your local vegetables, and keep the supply chain strong. As I say, Brexit's going to cause problems in the food supply chain, so it's important that we um, make our own local supply chain as robust as possible, OK? Right, Friday, SNP and Greens a deal, uh, uh, agree a deal to power share in Holyrood. The First Minister, Patrick Harvey, and Lorna Slater give a press conference at Butte, uh, Butte House, um, the First Minister's official residence. Okay. Now, the deal is announced uh, in a 31 page policy programme and agreement, and it's published for the public to read. The MDRF 2 is on a, um, the to do list, very high up in the to do list of this particular document. All right. Now, um, the First Minister, in her briefing, because she, they were asked about it, obviously, because they're coming into coalition, it strengthens the pro indy majority in the Parliament. It will guarantee the passing of the referendum bill in that Parliament. So, the uh, First Minister was asked about it, and she said that her intention is still to have the referendum in the first period of this Parliament, meaning by the end of 2023. And, uh, you know, the press pack were right in there. They wanted to put a spot, they wanted to put a lever right in that agreement just as it was made. The Brit Nattery was unbelievable. Of course, oil was brought up and the Greens disagreement over oil, transport infrastructure was brought up. The press conference went on for an hour. And I have to say, Patrick Harvey, Lorna and the First Minister played a blinder. They took the press questions and batted them straight back at them. All right, the First Minister was asked about a, the new oil field west of Shetland, 
um, uh, the Campbell oil field, and she said she'd already tell the uh, Prime Minister he should look again at what sort of licence should be um, allowed to drill in that area. And the Greens backed her up and said that there has to be a, a green transition. It has to be, on, be done quick, but it has to be done fairly. And it has to be done in cooperation with the communities that we're going to lose work um, or we're going to have to transition into different types of work. They also announced a £500 million package for the North East, where most of the jobs will transition from oil to greener energy jobs. All right. Now, the cuckoos in the nest, well, they went absolutely radio rental, didn't they, at the announcement. Right. The first up was Dross. Ross appeared on TV to claim the SNP and Green Alliance was all about independence. Though the man's as thick as mince, of course it is. It's the worry of the Scottish people. Now, what was interesting about the cuckoos in the nest, baiting them, because we're going to ignore Alex Co. Hamilton until Saturday. The two cuckoos in the nest, Poverty Pie Sarwar and Dross were out. Poverty Pie Sarwar says the alliance would be bad for jobs, and Dross, he says it'd be bad for families. We'll get a wee bit more of that on Saturday, anyway. Anyway, the cookies case in the rest, the, um, as I say, stupid Dross says it's all about independence, and cuckoo in the rest number two, ambulance chaser, um, a poverty pie Sarwa thinks the new alliance a, um, lacks ambition for Scotland's people in the Union. He doesn't seem to get it, they don't seem to get it at all, do they? They're demo not just democracy deniers, they're after chump. The Greens and the SNP were voted in on a manifesto of holding in their F2. And here we have two thick cuckoos in the nest. One telling us that there's no ambition for Scotland in the Union. Though, that's correct, there is no ambition for Scotland in the Union. The ambition's to get out the bloody Union. And the other one's telling us it's all about independence. Thick as mince, really. Really thick as mince. You know, anyway, the last story I'm going to cover for Friday is Dominic Rab calls for Rab to design uh, to resign from opposition parties increase. Rab is not budging, and that 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 changes a lot on Sunday because um, there's a wee bit of movement on Rab and Bojo on Sunday. All right, so Dominic Rab's in trouble. Um, the truth suit he didn't bother us by who could do his job. People in Afghanistan are going to die because of it. So the opposition parties are screaming for them to um, screaming screaming for him to resign. But as we all know. People generally don't resign for Bojo's cabinet. Matt Hancock, well, he fell on his sword because he had to. Right, let's move on to Saturday. All right, because it's the same short of time. Moving on to Saturday. Saturday started the, um, with the announcement that Mr Nasty, Alex Cole Hamilton, is the new irrelevant leader of the Fib Dems. Mr Cole Hamilton is a yellow Tory to the core and on the right wing of politics, but it won't matter a jot because he is just as insignificant as Willie Rennie and he will be as important in our lives and society as Willie Rennie, which means he won't be at all, right? He has an irrelevance and so is his four MSPs, which don't even constitute a party in the Scottish Parliament, all right? Right, Saturday, the SNP put the deal with the Greens before um, uh, the National Executive, and it's passed unanimously. There will be a vote by members this week to get the members' approval. The Green Party will also put the deal to its members this week, and if both parties agree to this deal, then when Parliament reconvenes next week, or at the end of this month, aye, next week, then there'll be Green Ministers in the Cabinet. All right. Now... Saturday, Douglas Ross, uh, he's under fire for claiming that the Greens and the SNP deal was anti-family. Um, and a dog whistle to the anti-gay and anti-trans lobby, Ross claims that the Greens and SNP's recognitions of LGBT rights are anti-family. Wow. Hey, talk about, how, I mean, how low do you go, Mr. Ross? Wow. You know, one thing about Dross folks is you can always guarantee when you've heard them speaking, you feel as if you've got to go and scrape something off the bottom of your bloody shoes. Right, Saturday, the Alba, Alba Party claimed, claimed the deal between the SNP and the Greens will kick independence into the long grass. Right, the Alba Party, 
wants Indiref to now. And it's called for the Greens and the SNP to get on with it now, um, rather than at some point in the future. The Arbour Party can, of course, say what the bloody will like. They're not in the driving seat. They're not going to be in the driving seat for a long time, if ever. Because in the event that the First Minister does call this referendum and it does go ahead on her time schedule, then probably by the time the, um, a, the Alba Party get anywhere near an election for a Holyrood will already bloody well be independent or will be in the negotiation phase. All right. Right, also on Saturday it's announced, it's announced that Liz Lloyd is to be replaced as the First Minister's Chief of Staff. She will be replaced by, um, as Chief of Staff, sorry, by Colin McAllister, who has been uh, actually acting Chief of Staff since May's election. Now, the First Minister has about 14 special advisors, better known as SPADs, and uh, Mr McAllister will now lead the First Minister's group of SPADs. All right, Saturday, Lord Ian Duncan, former Under Secretary to the Scotland Office from 2007 till 2019, says there is absolutely no point to the Scotland office and that in his time in the Scotland office he had two Prime Ministers and none of them wanted to speak to him about Scotland. He also points out that all the other um, a cabinet secretaries down that road when it comes to Scotland don't even bother consulting with the Scotland office. What Lord Duncan is saying is there's no point to the Scotland office. So Emma Harper a SNP MSP said Lord Duncan's absolutely correct. The Scotland office is now just a propaganda machine and they're using taxpayers' money to pump out pro-British propaganda from um, the Scotland office. To say, but Lord Duncan tells us that in his two years as an undersecretary in the Scotland office, under two prime ministers, nobody ever spoke to him and nobody asked him about Scotland when it came to policy. So it would appear they don't give a shite down that road when they're passing policy, what the opinions of Scotland are. Right, and my last story for Sunday, eh, for Saturday, was an opinion piece by Gordon McIntyre Kemp and the National. Now, what Gordon's telling is telling the Yes Movement is, put your differences to, to one side, and the F2 is on the cards. The campaign's about to get kicked off, so put the politics in your back pocket and get out there and get campaigning for independence and having that in mind just put the Arab crap to one side put the SNP and Arab crap to one side we have a Green and SNP coalition who are now driving forward apparently towards India F2 so it's up to us to start our campaigning again all right so with that in mind um, eh, this Saturday coming there is an anti-Trident pro-independence protest outside Fast Lane, Fast Lane on the 28th. So details are available on the CND webpage. Um, if you can get there, then get there. We need to get hundreds of thousands of people back out on the street. Hundreds of thousands. All right. So I'll be at the Fast Lane, at Fast Lane protest on Saturday, and I hope to see many of you there. Right, let's move on to Sunday, as I say, because time is short. Very short. Moving on to Sunday, Education and Secretary here in Scotland test positive for COVID, and we wish uh, Miss Shirley Ann Somerville a very speedy recovery. All right. Sunday, Boris's borough from Scotland to Northern Ireland is back in the news. This time, it's the mainstream media that are telling him he's having a bloody laugh. A tunnel from Scotland to Northern Ireland. I heard that. You'd be lucky if Scotland and Northern Ireland are still part of the UK by the time any such construction was finished. So that's never going to happen, all right? Sunday, new climate change advisory boards put together to work with the SNP and the Greens on the Green Recovery um, as announced, right? Um, round the world, the yachtswoman, um, Dame Eleanor McCarthy, and wildlife uh, photographer, uh, on the panel of experts, which will be chaired by the First Minister and Professor Sir Ian Boyd. Davy says, I don't care whose celebrities on the board. I only care about the boffins on the board, because it's the boffins on the board that are going to be making the decisions to drive the green recovery forward. And they, that, that reminds me, Indy Ref 2 is to be rebranded re the referendum for recovery, all right? Right, Sunday, 
Uh, by the way, a full list of the boffins and the slebs on that panel can be found on the Scottish Government website, all right? Sunday, Rab and Bojo um, start briefing, Dominic Rab and Bojo the Clown start briefing against one another and speculation over the, the uh, future of, of both are uh, at the fore, all right? Bojo will probably survive as long as the Tories think um, the bumbling idiot is a vote winner. Rab's jacket's on a sugary peg as Bojo's briefing against him. Bojo claims he told Rab to return from his holiday to deal with the Afghanistan um, a situation and Rab says Bojo would tell me stay on holiday so we have the two of them going at each other or what he said and what, what the other one said so it could well be that a uh, Dominic Rab's Jacob isn't a sh 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 uh, sugary peg right anyway the shambles of the UK government has been laid bare for the whole world to see with the Afghan saga right Bojo was in holiday Rab was in holiday head of the Ministry of Defence was on holiday. In fact, they were on bloody holiday when this happened. And it just shows you um, that, uh, you know, the UK is just really America's lapdog and it has no um, a part to play apart from being America's lapdog on the international stage. And uh, looking at the Omni shambles, which was the withdrawal um, from Afghanistan, then, you know, it's just as well that the UK is no longer a big player on the world stage. It's not even a second-rate player on the world stage uh, anymore. And the quicker they're kicked off the UN Security Council, the better. All right. Um, so, the little Engl uh, Engl Englanders doing that road's delusion of uh, Gross Britannia and ruling the waves is right out the windy. It's no Gross Britannia anywhere. It's little England and a insignificant Britannia, um, as it goes. Right, and my final story for Sunday, because I'm going to cut a couple of stories out here, as I have done all the way through the report. My final story for Sunday is a uh, shop owner's warn of stock shortages on the run-up to Christmas. Toy shop owner Donald Nairn of Edinburgh tells news outlets that suppliers have warned him to expect shortages due to lorry driver shortages, um, issues with Brexit, and a lack of containers to ship things around the world. <laughs> so the little ones are in for a hard year this year. Shouldn't they laugh at that? But hey -ho, you know, just the way it goes. All right, let's move on this morning and what the papers have to say, all right? I have to say, I could have went a lot more into the Greens and the SNP deal and the unionists bought on themselves. I mean, bought on themselves because they had democracy well out, as the First Minister keeps saying. All right. Moving on to smaller than what the papers have to say. The Scotsman goes with. High COVID cases could lead to school closures, um, a experts warn. Well, aye, of course they could. Could also lead to a second lockdown if it gets right out of hand. Sorry, a fourth lockdown if it gets right out of hand. Right, and uh, the Herald goes with. Uh, bank hub role hope uh, for areas hit hardest by closures. Now, this is a story we're talking about on Friday where they've been trialling and Canvas Lang, and they've been trialling in, in Rochford, doing in Essex, um, hubs where banks send people out a couple of times a week um, and into post office facilities um, so that uh, people can have direct contact with their banks. Well, apparently the, the experiments worked, so they're uh, going to roll it out, according to what we're being told by the Herald. The National goes on. Aye, SNP urged to, to commit to setting date for Indir F2. And I think that was a column by Peter Bell. Um, the record has, tragic war heroes, miracle baby. Now apparently some soldier had died in his sleep in January uh, while his wife was uh, 10 months pregnant, uh, 10 weeks pregnant. The child has been born. And uh, let's hope we can improve the planet for the child to have a long and healthy life. All right. The Daily Field goes with, don't cut and run yet, Joe. And that's the news that Bojo the Clown is going to ask Biden to hang about in Kabul a wee bit longer, to give him a bit longer to get people out. Right, the Telegraph has Johnson to push Biden on Afghan withdrawal. Well, you know, this was getting sounded yesterday. And according to the radio this morning, Biden still wants to move by the 11th of September. All right. The Express says, time running out for trap Britons. 
Afghanistan again, but we can blame that way on Rab. And uh, the deaths that, that ensue, we can also blame that at that bumbling lot of half that's doing that road, who haven't to go any foreign policies, never mind Gross Britannia rules the waves. Idiots. Right? Um, eh. And the eye goes with, rift grows with US and Afghanistan. You know? Eh. Eh. Rift grows with US over Afghan withdrawal. The US don't give a shite what the UK thinks. The US will tell the UK what it will do, especially now we've left Europe and we're exposed to the whole world. This tiny little insignificant piece of rock off the coast of Europe will do whatever any superpower tells it what to do. Especially the Russians, because let's face it, they're financing the Tory government. Right, the Times goes with mass airlift to evacuate 6,000 from Kabul. I heard that. The Metro goes with, I was just doing my duty. And that was, they did a picture of a soldier holding a baby at Kabul um, Airport, all right? And the Star has, ah, the Star does it again, done it, absolute mental. According to the Star, staycation, sensation, 12-day heat wave to start today. Somebody should have tell Easter who's, it's overcast and clammy. <laughs> <coughs> right. Sorry the fact was rushed. I'm under pressure today, folks. I now need to find out whether this motor's going back on the road or no. If it is, I'll be putting it straight back half a bloody road anyway. Okie dokie, so let's go through the usual stuff. Support the independent media. Support Broadcasting Scotland. Support Independence Live. Indie Live Radio. Um, a Caledon Media. Truth Radio. iScot Magazine. And the National Newspaper. Um, if some of them have got crowdfunders on the go and you've got a couple of quid, chuck a couple of quid in the pot, all right? And, of course, the health message and folks' facts. COVID cases are on their way up. We know that all this stuff's been scrapped except for face masks, but let's um, let's continue as if it hasn't, all right? So face masks and enclosed public spaces. Okay, avoid large gatherings except for ones that are sanctioned. Clean hands and surfaces regularly. Um... Two metre social distancing where you can because social distance has been scrapped and get tested. Now, I hope you've enjoyed the show today. It wasn't as ranty, wasn't as shouty, things like that. But, you, you know, it's the beginning of the week. Give me a chance to get the engine revving up. All right. <laughs> I see you there, Sarah. So, I'll give me a chance to get my engine revved up. By the end of the week, I'll be, I'll be screaming like a banshee as usual. <laughs> you just look after yourself. I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye then, now.